Hello, folks. Welcome to day three of the Core OS virtual face to face. This session is making Fedora Core OS an official edition. Um, I'll set some ground rules and then pass it off to Clement, who will lead the discussion. Uh, this is a virtual face to face, so if you feel comfortable, please turn your camera on so we can see your beautiful faces. Uh, please use the raise hand ability of Google Meet to queue up uh, your question or your response. Uh, and finally, uh, if uh, because there are a number of faces here from uh, Red Hat and elsewhere, please uh, provide a short introduction uh, if you speak for the first time. Uh, that'd be very helpful. Without further ado, Clement, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Micah. Um, so I'll start by introducing myself. So I'm Clement Verna. I'm currently a manager with the Core S team. Uh, I've been contributing to Fedora for I don't know, four or five years now. And I'm the owner of the change proposal to actually make Fedora Core OS uh, an official uh, edition. So a bit of background. So uh, during the Fedora 34 uh, change cycle, we propose to uh, actually uh, promote uh, Fedora Core OS as an edition. And we received uh, some quite good feedbacks and uh, this session is pretty much the opportunity to go together through those feedbacks and try to see how we address them and how we can uh, improve our uh, change proposal and um, pretty much see the, the way forward with, uh, with, with it. So in the AKMD that has been shared in the, in the documents, I can try to um, to summarize some of the uh, feedback and also some of the key concepts that I think uh, we care about. And I would like this session to be very open discussion and kind of like almost brainstorming. So I, I don't intend to do <laughs> all the talking, even though it's hard for me sometimes to, to listen. <laughs> Um, so yeah, feel free to participate and to uh, share your opinions. Uh, every opinion is welcome. There is a, um, like, you know, we are all respectful of uh, everyone's uh, opinion and um, every, everyone is, uh, is valued. So uh, please participate. Um, so some of uh, the key concepts that I think, uh, we really care about, um, and probably the main one, the main one that caused a bit of uh, of discussion, is that I think we want we care that we don't really want to be a Fedora Core OS thirty three or Fedora Core OS thirty four. Um, Fedora Core OS um, is um, is has its own release cycle, and we have like the, those concepts of streams with our um, um, like the next testing and stable stream. And for the end user, really the base of the, of the, um, of the, the, of Fedora Core OS on, on which base of, uh, of Fedora version is based Fedora Core OS shouldn't really matter. So, um, ideally, I think in the, in the change proposal, I think we, we want to adapt to the um, to the Fedora process and, re and uh, the, how we we integrate and we interact with the with the wider community. But I don't think we want to be tight and we want to be restricted by uh, like really fitting within this like six months uh, releases and having like a Fedora Core S thirty four release announcement or or thing like that. So. Um, do we have an agreement there or is it uh, like something that I've <laughs> pretty much is something that I thought was like something key, um, but I might be wrong. So is it something that we feel we pretty much aligned on? No objection. Okay. Um, Back to your to say. Yeah, I, I have okay, no objection. Yeah. I, have, I, have, I have two comments. Uh, one is um, this is one of the things I talked about, like I proposed at like the flock in Prague, like 
seven years ago or something. So I'm glad to see that we're finally at the point where we can actually tackle doing it. So, uh, you know, s slow progress towards the future. We eventually get, get places. Um, one thing I think that needs to be worked out with that is how the we don't have releases works with the release blocker process because release blockers are one of the few big hammers we have for serious bugs in all of Fedora. Um, and so if, if you know, um, generally one of the things we've said around additions are those are the ones where we take blockers most seriously. And that's one of the important things about being an addition. If this addition isn't on the cadence, what do we do with blockers there? Do we, if, if there's a blocker in Fedora Core OS, do we not ship the other things until it's fixed? Or do we say, okay, we're just not gonna rebase onto that new underlying thing until then i don't i don't know the answers but we need an answer to it yeah um that was uh, i had one point on on that uh, so i think we can we can dig into deeper into that benjamin you want you wanted to to comment on that yeah up to this point anyway that's been part of the reason that we have tended to ship the stable release uh the, the rebase the stable release a little bit later than the other Fedora editions. Um, so, you know, there's a bit of a chicken and egg question, but what we generally do if we find some last minute uh, blocker for Fedora Core OS is we'll just hold stable. Um, that may not be the desirable outcome in all cases. I think it's useful to have uh, some access to that lever to get packages fixed um, uh, in, in the Fedora as a whole. But it's also not strictly necessary. Like if there's some blocker that only affects the Fedora Chorus edition and not the others, it may not be the right thing to hold everybody else. I, I'm in favor of that. We just may need to develop some new levers. Um, that's uh, the other uh, topic that is going around on. this is publicity. Um, because it tends to be that journalists expect us to tell them what's going on in Fedora in our release announcements. Um, we can still do that, but that dilutes the message of there's not there's one stream and not different releases of it because people are still going to secretly think of it as Fedora Core OS 34 if we emphasize it in the release announcements all the time. Um, so again, I don't we don't need to delve into that topic right now, but we need to figure out a way to do publicity in a separate way. I think next person that was Ben, I think you raised your hand. Hi, I'm Ben Cotton, the Fedora Program Manager. Um, I wanna build on what Matthew said a little bit and um, in terms of um, holding the stable release a little bit behind the, the main uh, Fedora Linux release, uh, I think that also presents a problem when people, you know, on release day go to try Fedora Core OS and they're like, wait, why is everything the older versions of stuff? Um, and, you know, the addition, the addition process is as much a, for lack of a better word, political uh, determination as it is a technical one. And so, you know, that's where a lot of these process uh, misalignments are coming to a head where they weren't an issue before. Colleen, you want to go next? Or? Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of like interesting potential technical process things to dive into. To me, this feels more like an intent, like we will solve these things over time. Like it's not that we have all the answers right now, but just that, yeah, we, we believe we can address those sort of things and um, this is sort of an intent to do it. Because, you know, this this tension actually comes up in other cases. Like, I, I saw Ubuntu actually very recently switch to doing stage rollouts <clears throat> for apt too, um, because, you know, like, they they see the benefit, right? And so, like, you, you get these sort of, like, crossovers. So, like, yeah, Ubuntu recently, like, basically has that same problem. But, like, if you type app update on one system, it may not do the same thing as another, right? And, yeah. It's, it's just uh, it's part of part of this switching to this world, right? And uh, Simon Tho. Uh, so one thing from the QA side of things that Matthew already mentioned, 
we have something called a blocker bug meeting where we kind of discuss um, you know whatever the blockers are and then uh, you know just before uh, every monday now technically we file and maintain all those blocker bug uh, review process asynchronously on a blocker review app that we maintain but most of the core web stuff are filed on github so there is not much um, how do i put there's not much link between what's there on GitHub. Should we replicate the, those on Pagyar? And is it possible by which we can have those, you know, kind of catered to while we do the release blocking meeting, rather than having them uh, come at a very late time and then be like, oh yeah, you know, th this was not discussed ever before. All right. And yeah, I think it's. Um... So I guess to try to summarize and um, we pretty much have to, like, my feeling is that we have to come up with like our own process, but uh, also in some places, like for example, the blocker bugs, uh, also in or like the publicity and marketing. Um, like see how we integrate with other teams uh, within the within the community and like having those bi-weekly release. Um, how does how how do we how are we doing that? Um, um, so um, I had like my my first point was on like development and how we integrate with the Fedora Change proposal process. Um, but I had like the go no go process and release blocker as a second point. Um, since we started on that subject, maybe we we can go into uh, into that uh, that topic a, a little bit more. Um, Benjamin, you you wanted to? Yeah, just to provide a little bit of context. Oh, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, Benjamin Gilbert. I've um, I was very heavily involved in Fedora CoreOS uh, in the early days. I'm. Less so now, but I'm, I'm still around working on Ignition and Chorus installer and things. Um, the reason I think that we're so hesitant uh, to commit to uh, rebasing stable at any given point is that we have the additional burden of automatic updates. Uh, Fedora CoreOS in particular, so this is just for context for anyone who doesn't know, Fedora CoreOS in particular, we try very hard to never have users have to go manually fix up something. Um, the machine automatically updates. It's sort of an appliance. You don't have to think about it. Uh, and if we push out an update that breaks somebody, the concern is that that motivates users to turn off automatic updates. And they're not getting their security fixes. So uh, a lot of uh, the decisions around the stream architecture and some of the things we're doing differently are driven by that goal. I think we're much more conservative in in terms of um, updates and what changes also in, in the OS compared to um, maybe over edition like workstation. Um, all right, on the well, that, that's yeah. good to let people know because that helps people's confidence in the whole thing. So I think this is can, can be a selling point that it's the this is actively managed. Timothy. Hey, so I'm Timothy. I work on the on the core core team. Um, I think this is linked to to the to the way we do changes because um, there's a, the major difference between Fedora Core S and classic Fedora is that we push changes on a regular basis, and we don't go through the same process of having changes uh, be prepared and submitted for review for each release because we don't block them on being in a specific release. Uh, so in a way that's the, the, the release cadence is also linked to the fact that we do changes differently. And that's something we have to reconcile somehow with the way Fedora does uh, classic, I would say Fedora does changes. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Ben. Cotton. 
I have no answers for that easily. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, a lot of it is that Fedora Core OS happens sort of independently of what we typically think of as Fedora. Um, and, you know, it's partly a question of how much do we want to change that versus how much do we want to keep lending the Fedora name to Fedora Core OS and have it continue to be essentially a independent, tangentially related project. Yeah, I, I would like to see it. I, I think having change proposals going in, uh, you, and mostly they will be self-contained proposals, so they don't really need anything. They don't need, they don't, it's not like we're adding another level of approval that needs to happen to these, but they go through and people see them, people you know, um, see that this is a thing that's going on in mainstream Fedora activity. I think that'll be pretty valuable. Um, and, and it also helps build the community referencing back to last call. So I think it's a good thing to do that. Um, maybe we just need a way to tag them as something other than tied to a release. Um, just call them Fedora Core OS changes or um, I don't know. Yeah, Ben doesn't like that, but let's see, that's why I'm looking at you <laughs> for answers here. Uh. Yeah, to be clear, the only reason I don't like it is because um, it very much changes everything we currently have. Not necessarily that it's the wrong thing. It's just a lot of work to re-engineer processes to handle a new paradigm. Uh, Jeff, we want to go on. Um, so uh, I'll try and throw this out there. Um, I, I have people who I recognize upstream would like to replace Docker with Podman, for instance, and have no Docker shipped on Fedora for OS. Is that something that I suggest to Fedora in general? Is that something I suggest just to the core OS folks? Is that something that only happens on GitHub? What would be the process for doing something equivalent to a Fedora change request in Fedora but specifically just targeted at core OS. And th yeah, this hammers on what we were just asking Ben, right? So my instinct for that is that is a great thing that would be a self-contained change. If, if, um, if Workstation were saying we're going to do the same thing, we would ask them to do that as a self-contained change. And it's a self-contained change because we're not saying we're going to drop Moby or whatever from the repositories, that would be a big, a big deal. Um, maybe also, but if we're saying we're just, th this edition is going to ship with Podman instead, that's something that would be a self-contained change and it would be, you know, um, mostly you know, for, for the, the stakeholders of that edition to discuss and then for that to be a publicity because um, people, you know, users need to be aware. Uh, so I think that's probably the right thing to funnel it through, whatever um, it is. Um, and and I think having it look like the existing process is, I think having it part of being being part of the existing process is desirable. Uh, I don't know if if anybody disagrees with me on that. Um, I'd like to hear it. I think one thing we discussed uh, yesterday on like documentation and was also to try to have like maybe a bit more like, and I think the state discussed it also like having better release notes and things like that. So I see value in taking part of the change uh, change proposal process into that terms where it kind of give us some content to to talk about and say, oh yeah, look at what what changed in the last month or the last uh, release or so. Um, it's just really how we how we adapt uh, our the fast fast pace of uh, of Fedora Core OS to, to and those uh, things get picked up by um, Linux Weekly News and Pharonix and occasionally bigger journalists as well. Um, so it does does help publicize things. Mm -hmm. Colin? So, yeah, no, a different meeting uh, come on, uh, brought up Root of Dew, which is like actually a really good example of something that probably should have been a change, like because they just wrote a new software from scratch to update the root loader. 
Um, doesn't affect other editions yet, but like in theory, I mean, it, was, it is intended to also support like yum based systems and or even dev based systems too eventually. Um, because the traditional package managers just aren't very good about dating bootloaders. Um, but like, I feel like, so one thing I've been thinking about is like, we could try and align with the six month change cycle for some of these things. But the, the, other, the other thing that's like a real tension is like, we wrote this because we want to ship it in OpenShift 2 quickly. And so like, there's some, like, so if, like in some cases waiting six months for something to land can be a real problem, and others it may not. Um, and I, I, I just don't know how to. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, this gives you a whole big discussion. But I actually really like the the Rust compiler six week cycle um, with like longer epic cycles inside. But anyways, um, I'm just bringing that up as like I just feel like it is a really good example of yeah, boot up is just a really good example of like how we um, track this change, I guess. Benjamin, go. I think there's value in not stacking up uh, large changes and landing them all at the same time during a or around a rebase, uh, just from a change management perspective. That way, uh, we have fewer fires to fight at any given time. Mm -hmm. So we could actually plan, or like, know that we have like few changes coming up, but like. Plan plan those changes for different uh, stream releases and like yeah. Uh, ben, you wanted to. So I just wanted to clarify one thing about the, the you know, talking about the six month process. So the window between the self contained change proposal deadline and the GA release is about three months. So it's not like you you know would put something in and have you know wait six months for it to be released. Um, so it is a little smaller than it, it sounds when we talk about that. So I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page with that. Mm -hmm. And so you, you you were saying, Ben, in terms of, of like the process and maybe automation or thing like this, uh, it's very tight to the like the next like number of the, the, the federal releases. Um, right, because we have but, milestones around you know having the change complete you know a couple of weeks before. Um, you know, so like, should be should be in a uh, testable state by on you know Tuesday for the Fedora 34 release. So you know on branch day, um, and then a few weeks after that, it should be 100% code complete. And then we have you know a beta freeze and you know beta release, and then a couple weeks, and then a final freeze, final release. Um, so those are all you know very much tied around the idea of having schedule milestones, which doesn't quite fit. So they're like at a high level, the process really makes sense to just bring into but then when you start getting into the details it's when it starts getting really um start getting a lot of the disconnects there yeah christian so i actually wanted to throw this in earlier but my system crashed um so you probably somebody probably mentioned uh c groups uh v1 versus v2 that's one of the things um we haven't implemented that was a change proposal Fedora change proposal at the time I think we're only going to be doing that with the next release, uh, major release. So th those are the kinds of things, um, especially in the in the email thread on the change proposal, it even came up to just the idea, do we even need the server edition anymore um, if CoreOS uh, becomes a real edition? And I think it's it's important to note that we, we still have some areas that are covered better by the server version, at, at least in my opinion. Um, so, for example, we don't have a great uh, firewall story um, for configuring the firewall in Fedora Core OS yet, uh, because we don't ship Python, we don't have the firewall command. Um, we don't have support for RPM modules currently. I'm, I'm not sure um, that there was a blocker uh, for that uh, in terms that the libdnf didn't provide a C uh, API for it. I think they've now changed that. So maybe that it's feasible that we that we actually get that soon. But there's just a few things that aren't really tested on Fedora Core OS as a standalone thing. I think I don't think, uh, or at least I don't know if anybody frequently tests running Cockpit on it. Um, so these are the kinds of areas of friction I see in addition to the changes um, that we haven't been catching up with. Um, 
yeah, I just wanted to throw that in here, um, that there's still some work to do. Um, obviously, I'd love for Fedora Core OS to become a, uh, a full-blown edition as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, Matthew? Th this goes to the um, the politics of, of editions as well. Um, I think we, we had, on the develop list, we basically, the Fedora server edition had kind of fallen out of attention of anybody. And we were kind of thinking that it, without that amount of attention, it should be de-editioned. And the surprising result of saying that is suddenly it's got a lot of attention right now. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that lasts, but they are actually, there are people working on it again. Uh, and a lot of non Red Hat community people with enthusiasm for it, which is which is great. Um, yeah, so um, Colin's comment, we don't want to chain the edition status to the server edition status. I think that's true, but we also want to have a crisp, like part of the point of editions is when you go to get Fedora, you should easily see, oh, I'm going to do this. I want this one. And so we want to have a crisp definition that can, you know, there needs to be a 30 second explanation of whether someone should go to uh, Fedora Core OS or Fedora Server when they when they look at um, Fedora. And so I, you know, I, again, we don't need to come up with that right now, but that should be part of this process here. Um, and it's part of the reason we don't have like a KDE desktop edition because we use a different desktop technology is not a, is not the kind of thing we're looking for here. It should be, you know, use case, what, what are you trying to do? What are, you know, kind of user are you kind of kind of focus things. So yeah, this is going to sit beside Fedora server at least for a while. And so it should make sense doing that, um, which also means it doesn't have to solve all the same problems that Fedora server does. Like if modularity isn't a thing we're, we care about, awesome. Um, that's good for us. Uh, All right. Um, so I think to maybe close the like uh, the topic around like change, and I think we can we can maybe summarize in in like we well, Fedora Corus wants to participate in the change proposal, and it would be beneficial I think for uh, for everyone in the community. So uh, there is probably a bit more discussion and trying to find a a good middle ground and to how we can we can do that uh, is that something we I, we can discuss further with you ben or i would like to take it a step further unless ben tries to kill me when i say this which is i think we should develop a async change process that sits either within or next to the regular change process and okay. use this as a way to pilot it and i think we should explicitly say that we want that okay i was trying to be a bit more <laughs> i know i'm trying i'm trying to not to let's do it <laughs> no yeah it's good <laughs> and, and ben is, is making skeptical faces but not daggers right awesome perfect <laughs> i'm glad you wore the shirt <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I think it, it's worth spending a, a bit of time also on the uh, release criteria and uh, release blockers and go no go and how that looks like for us in um, in, in Fedora Core OS. And um, anyone wants to maybe give a, a kind of status of what we currently do there. And oh, I can do it. <laughs> well, okay. Um, my feeling is that we currently mostly rely. So, as Sumatra was saying, on the, we have like this uh, GitHub um, issue tracker um, where uh, users uh, can can raise bugs and, and like, uh, say, yeah, this is broken. And uh, so I've, I guess maybe the, the first the first thing to talk about is like the the relationship between the streams. And I think that's really uh, key to our, our uh, like release criteria or uh, go no go process would look like is like the relationship between the next testing and um, stable stream. Um, 
and how they work together. So we we expect users to um, like try like the next version of Fedora OS and report anything that would be uh, would be a potential blocker or potential issue. And if we have like um, if we experience some issues in, for example, in the next stream, that would uh, block this uh, stream from being promoted to the testing stream. If there are like serious issue in the testing stream, that would block uh, uh, that content to be promoted to the stable stream. I think that's currently the the kind of process we have in place to make sure that the stable stream is really stable and that we don't break um, users. Uh, users content um, and I don't know if we have like a formal process where we actually review this I think it's more maybe during the, the weekly IRC community meeting there are like some discussion on that um, um, Christian you want to to go ahead yeah, I kind of wanted to uh, fo focus a little bit on the relationship between uh, our Fedora change proposal process and the CoreOS enhancements repository that we have. So I think um, in, in, in terms of process, it would be great if we, if we looked at our, as the Fedora CoreOS team, if we um, looked at our enhancement repository and the enhancement and those that also affect upstream Fedora, we should then upstream, as in those enhancement proposals, should become a Fedora change proposal. So they, uh, you know, so, so we don't have divergence there. And then, likewise, uh, the other way around, um, there should be some process in ma making sure that change proposals in Fedora are also reviewed, uh, or at least they're on the radar of the CoreOS team. So we don't, and, and probably we've, we could have probably done better uh, with this um, because some of those changes we kind of only noticed, noticed rather late and then uh, we didn't implement them uh, because yeah because of that rolling release and updatability thing so uh, yeah I think in, it, it would be great to kind of uh, just create a process for, for these things um, and obviously make sure that a change proposal for Fedora should also be valid uh, if, if applicable for Fedora CoreOS. So we don't have this uh, divergence in the future that we don't catch up with Fedora changes. Cool. Thanks. Colin? Uh, wait, Clement, you were talking about bugs initially, right? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, I'll check. I um, do, do we actually make a conscious decision not to have a Fedora CoreOS component in Bugzilla? I don't remember this. We did, yeah, and I understand that. I mean, it feels like in 90% of the cases, we'll have an RPM component that corresponds to that, so we can at least just, you know, yeah, like ignition ships as an RPM and stuff like that, right? Um, after we're in, like if we hit, you know, if a user hits an Azure bug, like you can file against after we're in, we can roll it up as a blocker bug or something, but we, we definitely have the issue, right, is like, we do ship some bits that aren't RPMs, but it feels like we can just pick a random component, maybe RPM most used to come against. I don't know. Like as far as just bridging, mm -hmm. instead of like inventing a GitHub to like some process for what our roles I mean, I, I don't know. I, I actually feel very conflicted about this because I find Bugzilla much very productive, but I definitely understand that people who want to work with free and open source software uh, websites to use their free and open source software operating system. So, like, at least Bugzilla is finally open source. So, you know, if someone wants to use that instead of GitHub, I, kind of, I understand. Yeah, that. I think we do have some some component in Bugzilla, but basically, when somebody tries to open an issue there, it it directs them to the GitHub issue tracker, but they can still create an issue. Um, and there's a few of us that are, you know, we'll get an email. Um, so. uh, Simon Troy, you wanted to go? Yeah, so one thing that is, uh, as you were talking about the relation between uh, multiple streams, which is testing, stable, and 
next. So um, in the regular release process that we have, we kind of maintain, a, a, I mean, so as to talk about the quality, we kind of maintain a set criteria. So if something breaks mm -hmm. according to that criteria, we kind of call that a blocker. So like, for example, if the rawhide doesn't boot, then the rawhide is never getting to that branch state where we can pull it off and start testing. Uh, that way, we, we maintain some of these criteria into this link. So uh, currently, uh, it would be great to have some of these basic criteria set for multiple streams. So you can have, let's say, this testing stream should be able to run a container, a service. Um, people should be able to auto log in. I mean, those are the very basic things you want to uh, want them to work as a part of that stream, right? And if if they break, then we we kind of go ahead and say th this thing is not working for some reason. But most of it is anyway covered by um, CI. So I guess uh, on one end, that part is solved. However, if if something breaks, because in the last test day, we have been able to list some bugs, which uh, locate some of the breakages. But it, here's the thing, you know, uh, not all of them can be caught by CI, because some of them can be picked up from the change set. If something comes up on the enhanced rank, we can test them on. Um, on a regular test week or something, and we can roll them out as a part of blocker process saying this is this is exactly what it is. Yeah, thank you. Um, Jonathan. Hey all, I'm Jonathan. I work on uh, CoreOS, Fedora CoreOS and Red CoreOS. I just wanted to uh, raise visibility on the so Clement was talking about the the three production streams, but we also have like development streams and uh, mechanical streams, and what that means basically it's like streams that are less, um, you know, we I mean we do pay attention to them, but um, the, the goal is to be exposed to uh, problems much early on. So we have a rawhide stream now, for example, which tracks Fedora uh, Fedora rawhide, and uh, we do we have actually found bugs already there. Um, before it even you know before branching which is already like huge progress compared to what we had before but yeah i do agree there's still there's still a lot of you know uh work to be done there to integrate more with uh fedora and the one link that uh benjamin uh put into the into the chat there is an example of uh, how we do that when we track the uh fedora 34 change proposals and make sure we you know, look over those and make sure uh, whatever is going to affect us, we're aware of it. And, you know, if we need to talk to be part of the, parts of the conversation uh, upstream, then we definitely should uh, do that. I think like a big part of the problem is we're just not talking enough on the Devel mailing list uh, to be like, oh, guys, let's make sure this also works on uh, for our OS. Yeah, Jeff? Sorry, I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, Jeff Ligon, uh, I'm a manager at Red Hat for the uh, Arcos, CoreOS, and containers teams. Um, so uh, this divergence that we're talking about um, between the, the process for CoreOS and Fedora, um, is there any kind of um, trade-off that we're talking about in becoming a top level addition where it becomes the core S team's responsibility to maintain that anything that is being considered for a Fedora change request does get reviewed by core OS. Um, I heard Matthew earlier mention that, you know, it, it, it's nice to have a 30 second pitch or something about the use case of this and why it's different as being the feature of being a core OS addition, right? And so I think that's more of a feature than a bug. But I am wondering where the responsibility lies on whether or not something um, should be considered by CoreOS, if that falls on the CoreOS team or in Fedora in general to discuss whether or not it should go towards the CoreOS edition. Are we surrendering some kind of decision-making ability for in return for becoming a top-level edition, or are we just uh, making this a top-level edition for the um, the consideration and the naming and the celebrity of being at an equal footing with other additions, right? So I'd say to answer that, um, yes and no. Uh, in, I, you know, we generally give additions and non-addition variants 
some latitude in diverging from sort of what we what the the base is when it makes sense for their use case. Um, you know, if it was, you know, things like using the BSD kernel instead of the Linux kernel, for example, that might be an issue. But um, you know, by and large, if there's a you know a good reason why you can't or don't want to do it, we're not generally going to force that in most cases. Um, that said, I think there is there is some marketing and user experience benefit for CoreOS to be as close to what all the other Fedora Fedora variants look like in terms of um, you know configuration and uh, package versions, things like that. Um, so it's really sort of a case by case basis. And I don't know how you know to what degree you sort of evaluate each update that comes through now. You know, in terms of you know, obviously, uh, Fedora Core OS uses a much smaller overall universe of packages. Um, so you know, but I you know, I'm guessing you're not looking at each individual update as it comes out and saying, do we want to pluck this? Yes or no. Uh, so I don't, I don't really, for the most part, see it being a change for you when you become an addition. I guess is the short answer. Uh, I think Timote, you were next. You're muted, Timote. I'm sorry, I'm muted. Okay. Let's go again. So that's on the on the topic of release criteria and which change we look at and everything. And I think the release criteria we we have that in CI mostly. And so we we don't ever ship images that don't like aren't accessible over SSH or don't run whatever. So can't run containers or things like that. So it's not even an option for us to to ship that. It's, it's it shouldn't be possible. And then the so do we look at updates? I would say yes. We basically look at every single release we ship and try. We we take we have big well not so much like a long process, but that we we have a process to make sure that each update we ship is is good, and we try to improve that all the time. So I'm not saying that Fedora isn't tested, but I would say that Fedora OS is is more is much much more tested in in terms of that we have a restricted package set so if, of course we we can do that uh, but we we spend a lot more time doing that so it's and and so on the other side the the, the, the for the changes themselves for the bugs we also have more options when we have when we have issues and we can we can like cherry pick or, or I would say discuss specific issues with more options than regular Fedora has because we can refuse to ship a version or skip a version or force an update to a new version. That's something Fedora, regular Fedora cannot do. So uh, it's, it's a bit of a different uh, perspective around what we ship. Okay, I think Benjamin, you were next to go. For those who were uh, around during some of the initial discussions a couple of years ago, um, I think it's worth noting that we have scaled back our ambitions in terms of how finely we're tuning the package set. So uh, for the most part, we are we're snapshotting Bodhi stable into testing, and then that promotes it to the stable channel two weeks later, stable stream. Um, in some cases, mostly with uh, packages we maintain ourselves, like Ignition uh, releases will lead Bodhi stable. In some cases uh, where there's a regression of some sort, then we will pin an older version. So packages will trail Bodhi stable and will work with a package maintainer to, to get that bug fixed. So generally packages do not trail stable, for, are not pinned for an extended period of time. Um, a place where we will tend to diverge a little bit more is that we have uh, a pile of post-processing that happens. We will drop, uh, we'll modify config files in some cases that are shipped as part of packages. Uh, we'll sometimes delete files out of packages. Uh, we'll drop in, of course, additional config. Um, there's a Git repo that has essentially a whole tree of trees of things we're doing to the file system. Um, so there we tend to be somewhat more aggressive, but the package set itself is fairly vanilla 
Bodhi stable with a bit of an additional lay for the two week promotion uh, uh, timing. All right. Um, so do we want to add anything on that topic? Um, all right. I think, so from, from what I look at, um, I, I kind of agree with uh, Timothy that we have mostly, well, everything is in CI. I think we could do with maybe having some explicit, um, or at least write down um what are the like few, like really the, the few things that we really care and that we um just so that there is a clear uh, a clear list of uh, of our criteria and what we are checking and uh, so that's maybe something to do on our side so yeah but thanks Micah for the for the reminder um I had like a few over uh, stuff. Um, I think we we touched a bit already. How do we coordinate with other teams? So dogs, marketing, translation, magazine, web, and things like that. Um, that can be. Does anyone wants to to share opinions on this? Like how how we coordinate with other teams? Um, Um, it, it might be good to have somebody who checks in with the Mindshare meetings regularly, and that is all, all these things listed in the other teams here are, are uh, Fedora Mindshare teams. So mm -hmm. having somebody who goes to the Mindshare meetings um, regularly would probably be a good way to make sure that connection happens. Um, I can actually mentioned. take this off, um, you know, because I have been a mindshare representative for some time now. Um, I, I actually know folks uh, who are working um, in this specific areas and have been contributing for some time. So I, I, I might be able to help in this regards. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, all right, so I guess uh, the next steps on this is uh, go and annoy Ben with <laughs> with trying to get, to uh, craft a new <laughs> a new change uh, change process. And gone. Yeah. I I think in general, um, I was looking through our you know editions policy and. Uh, Everything is pretty far along on that list. There's not anywhere I see as like a huge gap. So it's, so it's a lot of working on details here. Things so I feel pretty positive about this. Also, the other thing is I, I wore this shirt today and I realized it wasn't on camera, but I wanted to make sure I show it off here before we end the meeting. <laughs> yeah, it's <an> appropriate. <laughs> but Timothy's got the same also. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so really, like, to, I think the, the next few things, yeah, is going to try to at least get a draft um, or at least start the conversation on the, the change proposal process and how it would look like. Uh, I think we can do better also into, like, the release blocker and release criteria, maybe have something a bit more explicit and talk with... I might reach out to you, Simon Trow, and, like, try to, to see from the Fedora QA point of view uh, what, sure. what you would like and... Uh, how, the, how we can help with that. Sure. Great, I think we, we reached uh, the time. So um, I wanted to thanks everyone for your contribution. I think it was a really great conversation, um, like a lot of good ideas and a good exchange. So thank you everyone for, for participating and joining, spending the time with us. <laughs> Awesome. I'll stop the recording shortly. Uh, for the Red Hat CoreOS team uh, proper, we're going to have the retro in 10 minutes on the other Google Meet URL. So stick or, uh, please make yourself available for that because we'd love to know how to make these uh, virtual face-to-face -face sessions better. Um, so yeah, just to say again, thank you all for attending and contributing to the uh, discussion. Uh, have a great day. We'll see you on
online, I guess. Thanks, Kamat, for uh, 